Clemson three, Georgia 34. Mm. Clemson played the dogs close in the first half, but ultimately Georgia's talent, Georgia's depth just took over in the second half. Uh, They really got the run game going in the second half, found some creases. Uh, That resulted, they then built on that, found some big plays in the passing game. And uh, I thought Clemson's defense should be very proud of the way that they played. They just didn't, they didn't get anything from their offense. I mean, it's all about playing complimentary football and Clemson's defense was just on the field for too long. And Clemson didn't have, they did not have the type of playmakers on offense to to get much of anything done against a Georgia defense that, oh, I'm shocked, looks like the real deal. Yeah. It, it felt like, you know, in a basketball game, oftentimes it's it, the score is somewhat easy early on, but you could just visually tell that one side is getting buckets easily, the other side, it is an absolute grind to try and try and find a way to get the ball through the hoop. And that's what it felt like with Clemson. It was close, but you could just tell that they were they needed like extraordinary things to happen. And you know, it was just it was very difficult to find any yards at all. And you felt like at any moment the gates were gonna swing open for Georgia. So, I mean, it was a good job staying close for a while, but too deep, the talent's just too much. And honestly, I thought the biggest difference for me, I mean, and there was a lot of it, but Beck was, I thought he was outstanding at quarterback. He does such a good job for them making the right play, making the easy play, the smart play. He had some really nice throws, but a lot of it is just distribute the football, pull it down, and and pick up a first down every now and then. It's just smooth, efficient play at quarterback. He looked a tier, maybe two, above Cade Klubnik in this game. Just way more – he was playing on time, way more anticipatory throws, more accurate, uh, took better care of the football. Than Club Nick did. Don't get me wrong. Georgia's defense looks elite. They controlled the line of scrimmage. Clemson could not run the football. And, and when that happens, if you want to win the football game, man, you got to have a special guy at the quarterback position to go out there and make plays. And that is just not what Cade Club Nick is. I, I thought he underthrew several deep balls where Clemson wide receivers had a chance to go go win. Yep. And it was just short and underthrown. The interception's a perfect example. But it's probably worth mentioning also that Georgia didn't have its top two running backs in this game. Mm-hmm. And then Nate Frazier, the guy that started running wild in the second half, is a freshman. Georgia's just got dudes. Dudes, as far as the eyes can see. That's the problem with them right now is even even if you can match them for a little bit, they just the talent at some point overwhelms you. And they've got the edge at probably every position on most teams in the country. And it's just a matter of time before all of those those matchups that that they've got the advantage in start to work themselves out in a football game. It's just hard to keep pace. The conversation around Dabo Sweeney and his refusal to use the transfer portal is going to ramp up. You look at Georgia who has arguably the most talented roster in college football. They've won two out of the last three national titles. Back shoulder throw on the touchdown. Colby Young, transfer from Miami. London Humphreys, shallow cross, catches it. Looks like they clone Ladd McConkey, by the way. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, 
takes a shell across to the house. Biggest play in the second half, right? Transfer from Bandy. I, Clemson is not a serious national title contender anymore. They will not be a serious national title contender until Dabo Sweeney starts taking transfers. That's just how I feel. And I think I think this game was a perfect display of that. And I as I watched Miami and Florida and watched Cam Ward, part of me started going, what happens if that guy played quarterback at Clemson? Yeah. Not Miami. How different point. does that game look? And it's yep. just I that's just where I'm at with Clemson. Really good program. Uh, pr- going to continue to produce a ton of pros, especially on the defensive side of the ball. But I just, they are they are not a serious national title contender to me anymore until Dabo adapts. It's just where I'm at with them. I, I, I think that they, and I agree with you, um, as far as competing for a national championship. I think... They they lack they have lacked for a while a quarterback that makes everyone around them better. If you just line up Clemson's roster right now across the board with most everyone in college football, they're right there or better outside of you know just a small handful of teams. The problem is they don't have a quarterback that accentuates the talent on the roster at all and that is going to be very difficult to overcome whenever you play the better teams like Georgia it became apparent very quickly that there's there's one guy on Georgia's side that does a really good job accentuating the talent that they have and on the Clemson side you don't get anything close to that so I I totally agree and it's a good point with Cam Ward because he was making plays for Miami. Miami goes to the swamp and smacks Florida around 41-17, to 17, and it could have been worse. Mm-hmm. This was a good old-fashioned whooping. Cam Ward just might be the best player in college football. Dude seemed in complete control of everything. Even his stupid interception looked cool. <laughs> it was a terrible decision, but I was just like, that is a that is one nice looking interception. He just looked so calm. Uh, his accuracy for the most part was really impressive. The dude is not afraid to push it down the field. Used his mobility when he needed to to pick up first downs as a runner, used his mobility to extend plays. His ability to spin out of pressure is impressive. Some quarterbacks just have that. Yeah. The environment did not phase that young man at all. I thought it might incorrect. He was, I mean, I was wildly impressed with what he just did. That was, that was fantastic. And it makes me think that Miami has everything they need to go win the ACC. Yeah. I, I thought he was great. And he's one of those players where, Every now and then, you you come across guys where the bigger the moment, the more difficult the environment, the better play you get out of him, and, and he just might be that kind of guy. So, no, I'm with you. I thought Miami looked like a really balanced, overall, well-coached football team, which has been a problem for them over the years. I mean, talent hasn't often been an issue for them. It's do they look like a disciplined, well-coached, organized football team? And I thought that was one of the things that really stood out to me overall for Miami is they just looked put together. That makes sense. Completely agree. Especially at the line of scrimmage, thought Miami's offensive line did a really nice job controlling the game. They ran it efficiently as a team. And then Cam Ward had all day in the pocket, the majority of the game. 
I, I thought that defensive line for Miami, other than Montrell Johnson's long touchdown run on the pin pull play to the boundary, Florida essentially did nothing on offense, and it was because that group of transfers from Miami on the defensive line, it looks like that group's fitting well together. They they got after a Florida offensive line that some of the lack of effort plays by Florida's offensive linemen in that game, if I was that O-line coach, I don't know how he didn't strangle a couple of those guys on the sideline. Now you have the tablet, you can watch it. You can watch the play. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know how he didn't fight one of them. There's just a couple. Graham Mertz is getting killed, and their offensive linemen have stopped. It was insane. Mm. I It was making me, I was upset on my couch watching it. I just don't well, know how you, I don't know how you're okay with putting something like that on tape. It's crazy to me. But really, really nice performance by Miami. And, I just, how long does Billy Napier last? I don't know if he, know. if he wants to save his job, just put DJ Lagway in, let him go. Let him try and create some stuff and maybe muck it up a little bit in some games and QB and see run if you game. Can hang around, yeah. Uh, that guy is a physical specimen, but move the pocket more. QB run game. If you show some promise, maybe you keep your job. I, but <laughs> what Graham Mertz have like ninety-one yards passing? It that was yeah, that was there. as bad as it could have gone for Florida. Miami came into their house and smacked them around and made them quit. That's as bad as it could have gone for Billy Napier, and Miami probably could have scored more points. Yeah, they uh, they better get they better get better quickly because they may they may get the old Florida sweep. Oh, that team! They play UCF too, right? Yeah. Right. You better come together because you may lose to Miami, UCF, and Florida State. My last thought on that game. It took me a while. Cam Ward reminds me of Kyler Murray. Really? Yeah. Play the the demeanor, the the flair for the position, the spinning out of pressure. If you don't get too caught up in the size aspect of things, which I know is hard yeah. with Kyler, he's clearly there's very few quarterbacks on planet Earth that can run like Kyler runs, but the mobility, the arm angles. Like he just plays the position with a, and this is a positive thing, like a nonchalantness. I thought, I was sitting there going, who does he remind me of? What is, just getting back there, buying time, then whipping it with an incredible strong arm. I was like, that's, I, I'm, I am detecting some Kyler Murray vibes here. I'm going to have to evaluate that. I'll evaluate that. I'll get Just back file it away. You. File okay. it away. Let me know what you think. We'll we'll watch him play again. Notre Dame. What a win. Went to Kyle Field. Place was going crazy. And the Fighting Irish get it done. 23 to 13. Ted, I can only imagine how much you love this game. A whole lot of defense in this one. A lot of defense. Um physical football game. Ah. I thought, you know, there were moments where I thought Texas A&M looked like they were, it was just kind of waiting for something to happen there offensively and they could take control of the game. But that never came. And as the game wore on, it became pretty clear that a and is kind of holding on for dear life and Notre Dame is has, has made it clear they're the better football team. They're close, but... The offense for Notre Dame, the playmaking at quarterback was just a little bit better. I was not impressed with Connor Wegman at all. I was not impressed with the AM offense at all. Would they have 245, 246 yards of offense? I mean, I understand playing at 
and calling it conservative because of the type of football game it was and, and what you are on defense. But, I mean, at some point, you've got to open it up a little bit and, and let your quarterback try and make some throws. And, and they did that a little bit, but, I mean, you've got to back some of those defenses off of you or it just becomes – there's no way that you're going to move the football if you don't get people backed off the line of scrimmage. I thought the biggest difference in the game was Notre Dame's ability to produce in the run game. And that was, you know, the long Jadarian Price touchdown run, Jeremiah Love and what he did late in that game. But it also was Riley Leonard. That guy's ability to run I think the mobility difference between the quarterbacks was one of the biggest reasons why Notre Dame won the football game. Yeah. And Riley Leonard is easy to cheer for. That is a gritty dude. I'm not sure he didn't play essentially that entire football game concussed after that targeting call early, but he made, he got hard fought yards. He picked up first downs in critical situations and you just didn't get that from Connor Wegman really yeah. at all. I, w- I was very underwhelmed by what I saw from A&M's quarterback. Yeah. And you mentioned the targeting call. The A&M lost some guys throughout that football game, too, that were a big impact. You know, Lost some, that, a couple of difference-making defensive linemen early in the game. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that was, I thought that was, ended up being a factor. But you're right. Uh, it's the playmaking ability at quarterback, the the ability to run around, make some plays, go pick up some tough first downs with your legs. Like if you don't have that in college football, it's so like, you have to have a difference maker at quarterback. You just do, and not that Wegman's not a difference maker. I think he's he's a good solid player, but. In this one, Riley Leonard was the better player. Notre Dame was 2 of 12 on third down. Hmm. How do you win a game when you're 2 of 12 on third down? Yeah, sounds familiar. (laughs) You win the turnover battle 2-0. That's how how you win it. And the only other thing on this game is I picked A&M to win the game. I thought Connor Wegman was going to play better. When I saw that shot of him just casually puking during the game, I knew it was over. <laughs> I did not like where uh, I was like, well, this seems like a game Notre Dame is going to win. That That's not a good sign if the quarterback's just casually puking coming off the field. Not not what you're looking for. No, nah, yeah, that's not good. Just a I bit. will say that Jason White used to puke before every game. Yeah, in the before is fine. <laughs> During is not right. Uh, that's uh, that was still a, it was still a good football game. I thought the environment was awesome. Um, how, how do you think a And M a And M a And M fans feel? The defense, right? Elko is a defensive guy. He was brought in to get that defense rolling. Their defense played well enough to win the football game. Yeah, the offense is what let them down. And I think it's it's probably expected that the defense was going to be better, at least in the beginning. Like, it's going to take a while for the offense maybe to catch up, but they probably feel like it's not a good sign. But here's the thing. That was a good, tight football game with a, a – I think Notre Dame's a legit top 10 football team, don't you? So, I mean, I don't know. Obviously, you'd feel much better had you won the football game, but I don't, I don't think that A and M is far off. I if some things can come around, we got to remember Wegman still hasn't played a whole lot of football. So, I don't know. I guess, I guess, if I were A and M fan, I would be optimistic for the upcoming season. I think that. I think they're they're going to be a, a tough football team this year. Record wise, I don't know, but they're going to be tough to beat, especially at home. Notre Dame may have some difference making skill guys. 
Bo yeah. Collins could not look better in a Notre Dame jersey. I, agree. I don't I don't know what it is, but he looks better in a Notre Dame jersey than he did at Clemson jersey. He looked incredible. And then the running backs like Love and Price, they both those guys looked explosive. Those guys looked like they had juice, and that's what's been missing a lot of the time for Notre Dame. That's been the conversation. Like, do they have enough speed and size at the skill positions? You factor in Riley Leonard's ability to run. I'm, Notre Dame fans got to be excited as hell. They, it, they feel like a lot for the playoff at this point. Yeah. I would say the only thing to look out for is – Right. One of the differences in that game was Riley Leonard's ability to make plays with his legs. It has to make you nervous every time he takes off. You know, took the injury last year. If, you know, he, a big, this was a big game and those are big moments. So you got to go do it. But he needs to be selective this year on whenever he's selling out with his body to pick up first downs. He does have one or two moments every game he plays where you're going, ooh, is he going to get up? Yeah. Yep. He's got to root for, though. 